The era of the Roman Empire was a massively influential one throughout history, but it's also one that's not that often covered in gaming. 2017's Wolverblade on the Nintendo Switch aims to solve that by looking at Rome's failed conquest of Britain in the 2nd century AD. Does this game rise to prosperity like Rome did, or does it fall pretty quickly to the bottom, like Rome did? Let's find out. Before we start, a quick disclosure. A copy of this game was sent to me by the publisher for review purposes. Based heavily on Rome's attempted conquest of Britain in the 2nd century AD, Wolverblade puts you in the shoes of Karadic, one of the leaders of the island's northern tribes. Well, technically it puts you in the shoes of three characters, but the story focuses specifically on Karadic, with the other two just kind of being... there. Karadic refuses to sit down and let Rome take his homeland, and he sets off to take on the 9th Legion head-on. From there, he... well, he does. The narrative itself isn't much to write home about, it's a means to an end. What does stand out about Wolverblade is how much effort went into its historical accuracy. The team, especially lead developer Michael Heald, spent days traveling the same paths that Karatek and crew would have. Many locations, and even some characters, actually existed, and the team's love of history shines here. The game's not just historically accurate either, it also dives into some Scottish folklore, namely the Wolver. Karatek and crew each have pet wolves that can help in battle, but the Wolver is a different beast entirely. There's not much more I can say without going into plot details, really. The game does kind of sprint to its ending though, as I'll get into in a little bit, so once the credits rolled, I was left wanting more. Otherwise, the cutscenes are a treat, the history buff in me loved the attention to detail, and the story holds its own well enough. It's by no means a game-changing script, but it gets the job done. And plus, it involves Rome, and I love me some Rome, so I'm going to give it a silver bolt for its story. Wolverblade is a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up game drawing heavy inspiration from classics like Double Dragon and Golden Axe. You can move around the levels, block with the A button, jump with B, and perform your main weapon attacks with Y. Occasionally, you'll also be presented with a somewhat limited-use heavy weapon, and when you have one, you can use it with the X button. You can chain very light combos together using your different weapons, grab and throw enemies when you're within range, and even perform running attacks by using the R button. As you progress through levels, you'll often find dropped swords, spears, or even limbs that you can pick up with Y and throw at your foes for that little bit of extra damage. Have you ever killed a Roman with his best friend's disembodied head? That's metal as sh**. Now, most of this is your common beat-em-up fare, but there are some unique things that take advantage of Wolverblade's, well, name. For one, once per level you can call your trusty pack of wolves as a screen clear, defeating everything but bosses instantly. Additionally, as you continue to rack up the pain on the oncoming legions, you'll build up a rage meter. When it's maxed out, you'll slow down everything around you, regenerate your health, and become invincible as you take out enemies with your bare hands. It's simple, as you would expect from an arcade-style game like Wolverblade, and as a result, it's very easy to pick up and chip at bit by bit. However, there's not all that much to chip at. The game only has 8 stages, and while each level skews on the long side and can easily run you over 15 minutes, that's still 8 levels. Just as Wolverblade really starts to pick up, it's over. If you're not satiated by the game's normal mode, there is a more pure-styled arcade mode where you only have three continues total, but this doesn't unlock anything of significance. That third game mode you see on the screen isn't actually out yet. According to the developers I spoke to, it's aiming for a release at some point this year as a free update. It'll focus on that other gameplay style that's present in the game's final levels, and I'm actually really excited for it. But I can't give a game credit for something that's not even out yet. If you're anything like me, Wolverblade will leave you hungry for more. Beyond just being on the shorter side, part of this is also due to the lack of overall variety. For example, each level introduces enemies at a pretty even pace, and each of them does feel different in some way. However, they don't exactly feel varied after a certain point. You'll still have to take down almost every enemy with the same basic attack combos and the occasional ram attack to knock down shields here and there. Pretty quickly, Wolverblade ends up with the same five or so enemies being thrown at you a dozen times per section before you move on to the next room and do it all again. Even the different weapons you can find throughout all the levels more or less function the exact same, and in my experience, none of them seem to have significant power differences. Since the heavy weapons break after an extended use, you never actually have to make a choice, just grab the new one and move forward. 
The closest semblance to genuine variety that Wolverblade has is in its characters. There are three to choose from, Karatek the all-around type, Brennus the slower but heavy hitter, and Guinevere the fast hit-and-run sort of fighter. They still mostly control the same, but they do feel distinct, and I appreciate that even more when playing the game with two-player co-op. Co-op, by the way, is absolutely the ideal way to experience Wolverblade. If you're feeling particularly show-off-y, you can go for high scores by beating levels quickly, with all of your lives intact, and while finding hidden secrets and bonus points. You can even attempt one of the game's endless arenas, where you'll battle waves of baddies in order to, I quote, challenge the global leaderboards. The global leaderboards don't exist. All leaderboards, at least right now on the Switch version, are local only. Still, the option's here if you'd like. Also, totally as an aside here, I never once got a secret bonus. I obtained almost every collectible in the game, looked thoroughly within levels, and even checked with the lead developer to figure out what that meant. I don't know what I'm missing. If you know, by all means let me know in the comments down below. Outside of the issue of variety, however, the game is incredibly enjoyable. Again, I was left wanting more by the time I was done with the 3-4 hour campaign. That says a lot about the quality of the experience here. The bosses in particular were highlights, bringing out the absolute best of the mechanics and forcing you to think, beyond just running into shields and mashing Y for most of the rest of the time. I do wish there were more checkpoints just before the bosses though. You only get one checkpoint per level, sometimes less than halfway in. It's so frustrating only having one life left by the time you get to the boss and knowing you'll have to plod through 5-10 to 10 minutes of grunt killing to get back there after you die. At the same time, it's incredibly satisfying in an old school sort of way when you do take the level bosses down. Either way, an easy mode is on the way later down the road for those that might be turned away by the game's difficulty. With just a little bit of refinement, Wolverblade would have some truly great gameplay. Perhaps that eventual patch will do just that. As it stands right now, the game just accomplishes what it sets out to, doesn't tend to exceed it, and even sometimes falls below par. The fact that I still want to pick it up and play it more than a month later bodes well, so I'm going to give the game a silver bolt for its gameplay. Wolverblade's art style is, simply put, excellent. The team pulled no punches on making the game exactly how they saw fit, and that includes making it an absolute gore fest at times. With enemies being cut to pieces and blood everywhere, Karatek and crew certainly earned the M rating here, and that's refreshing in a way. It doesn't feel gratuitous because of the game's exaggerated cartoony visuals, but it also doesn't feel childish. Every character and every stage was drawn to be down-to-earth, believable, and real, and it's a real highlight. The believability is, as I mentioned earlier, due to the insane amount of effort the team went to to make the game as historically accurate as possible. There are over 200 unlocks you can find throughout the game, with each telling you about a specific weapon from the Roman military, or a video about a location from the stage you're in, or even letters written in-game from a father to his son to flesh out the world you're playing in. Now, given most of these weapon notes are nearly identical, but it's all here solely to provide extra immersion for those that want it. Additionally, Wolverblade's HUD has some nice little touches to make it feel accurate as well. For example, enemies will have unique names. Instead of fighting a nameless Roman grunt, you're fighting, I don't know, Steve. Steve has a family, he has ambitions, goals, dreams. Oh, you killed him. You killed Steve. You monster. And I... Even the overworld map has this extra love. I thought the game was going to be much larger looking at how big the world map is. I thought that maybe there were bonus levels, maybe there were these forts that you could take over as optional objectives, but no, there's none of that. With several outposts marked that you don't actually visit, and miniature video diaries for some of these, discussing ancient landmarks or old Roman outposts, the game's shorter length sort of stung that much more. When you're presented with this big, wide, sprawling ocean and then you're given this tiny little pond to play in, it's inadequate to say the very least. The voice acting is passable. I appreciate most lines, but my inner history buff wishes the Romans would have been cast with a more accurate dialect. As it stands, most everybody has an English or Scottish accent. In one specific instance, a Roman soldier's name, Titus, is mispronounced by a Roman in the English, Titus. For a game with as much attention to historical detail as this, it was just a little flub that stuck out to me right away. Many of the lines spoken in combat do get repeated a bit more than I would like as well. Having a few more recorded for use by each character would have went a long way, even in a shorter game like this. 
The music, though, does its job pretty well. None of it is memorable to me, as it's mostly background noise, but I do know that it helped drive me forward during fights, and that it conveyed exactly the appropriate emotion for any of Wolverblade's cutscenes. My big issue is that this game is incredibly poorly optimized. On top of the occasional frame dropping, the loading times are outright unacceptable in 2017. Some loading screens stretch well past 35 seconds. I'm sorry, this sort of game should not and does not need a longer load time than Breath of the Wild. Especially if you're gonna have cutscenes before these loading screens without actually loading some of the game in the background. That's just bad planning. This might be a bit harsh, but I'm going to give Wolverblade's presentation a bronze bolt for now. The loading screens and the occasional framerate issues in particular just kill the game's flow for me far too often. These two things, plus the tease that is the overworld map, override the positives for me. I really enjoy the way the game looks, I like the way it sounds, but the problems underneath the hood aren't as easily covered up as I would like. If the load times and frame rate are improved significantly with updates down the road, and those global leaderboards I mentioned earlier are actually made, you know, global, then I would happily reconsider this score to a silver bolt. As it stands right now, those are just the final weights holding the game down from true greatness, and that's more disappointing than anything. As of the time of this recording, Wolverblade is only available on the Nintendo Switch. A Steam, PS4, and Xbox One version of the game are on the way down the road, but we don't have a release date for any of them yet. The game is currently priced at $20, and at the current state it's in, it is not worth $20, I'm sorry. The loading screens, the glitches, the frame rate, and the lack of the third game mode means that there's really not much content here for this game. I could see $10. Maybe 15 if you wanted to push it if you really wanted to beat him up on the Switch, but right now, I cannot say it's worth $20. That said, if you've already played it, what do you think about Wolverblade? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button and share it with your friends. And if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. As always, stay golden.